Go on, go on, go on, do it, do it, do it. Fish! Okay, well today is, uh, there's a bite, uh, neap tide, uh, it's just gone low water, cracking visibility, is what we'd want. I had a couple of inquiries, but no serious bites yet, which is a shame, but uh, it's only about the fourth cast. So the gear I'm using today is a Sakura species, um, a Shimano Stradic 4000 FL XG. Um, I'm using Sunline Castaway 8 strand 30 pound braid to a. Go on, go on, go on, do it, do it, do it. Fish! Right, so as I was saying, so we then got goes down to a size 14 swivel. I pre-make all my traces, so I've only got to tie one knot if I get snapped up or when I arrive at the place. And 20 pound fluorocarbon to 12 gram lead. And this is a Sluggo's, yeah, a, a Molex Sluggo's on a size 10 hook. So yeah, so this season uh, with the, the new reel, I don't know. Um, I wanted to step up things a little bit. Um, this rod is interesting from the point of view that on the label, sorry, on the rod itself, I think it says it will cast up to 60 grams. Well, that's complete fallacy. It won't cast 60 grams. Um, that's what it says on the rod. On the Secura website, it says it will cast up to 35 grams. So I'm guessing it's a little bit in the middle. Probably it would cast 45 grams. Um, I wanted to push things up a little bit, I wanted a bit more power. Uh, the previous rod I had um, was a Century HPR. Now that was 7 foot 7 long um, and would cast up to 28 grams. That was a bite. And as good as it was, and it was an excellent rod, I wanted that bit more length. That's another bite. And a bit more power. Um, this rod I managed to pick up for uh, 9995 is a great price they're normally around 100 120 quid something like that no well that bite wasn't a big fish i know that for sure and yeah and equally so stepping up in the um in the braid department as well so i've, I've got more power i've not gone up leader strength wise i, I don't think i need to um, just let's skin this hook a bit better so some people call this text posing i call it skinning where the hook's like that and you just pull the bait forward put it back like that and now it's completely weedless so what i'm doing i'm doing sort of like a, a sink and draw but um when i'm drawing it's more of a, a flick so it's getting the lure up in the water and it will then float down so these beaver tails which is what this is have that sort of flappy tail um, but 
Yeah, the downside, as I said, the, these Molex ones, the, the tails are so thin, it's ridiculous. Okay. Let's see who's living over there. So I'm getting bites from them, which is really good. Uh, we've got a couple more packets ordered, I think I might have told you that. Right, let's see if we can go, go back and get another bite. Well, it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, but that will probably do. noisier than I wanted it to be. So these are a new lure that Adrian's put me onto. Um, they're only available in this one colour, which is a real shame. But they look amazing. So let's try and get in a nice slot in the belly. Oops. Coming out the middle of the back would be good, like that. Okay, so let's see if we can do anything with this. Never used this lure before. Okay, so let's try over there first, because we know there's a fish living over there somewhere. The other thing that's got to be worth mentioning is every now and again using dark colours can be all well and good. But sometimes not something that's a bit more there, see? You see the, the hit the line had there? Yeah, just wait. Nothing big. Nice and orange. Right mate, calm down. It's fine. Right, you're wet there, so just keep yourself still for God's sake. Do any pliers for you. That's the important barbless hooks, folks. That was in there good and proper. Right, let's see if we can get a quick picture. Well, there's no point swimming. I'm trying to swim, mate, because you're not going anywhere. Let's put you back. Right, it should be so good. I fish. That's a beautiful kind of fish, that. It actually made him look even bigger, didn't it? Yeah. It's always 
nice to be able to lay them on in a rock pool or something like that. Unfortunately, that just wasn't the case for that. But it was on in wet landing net mesh, so that's as good as I could give him. So you may or may not have seen that Adrian was just um, changing my SD card or something like that, playing with the camera, <laughs> and I had a bite. So it doesn't matter where we are fishing today, but this can be a very, very good mark. Um, and as you may or may not have heard, Adrian, he loves fishing this on bigger tides. Well, we're, we're quite a neepy tide today. Um, personally, I've never found tidal states, as in springs or neeps, make any significant difference. Uh, but that's just me. Um, I tend to be able to catch whatever the tide has been doing and I'm not bothered as to whether it's um, low, middle or high tide. Uh, that's weed. Come on. Right, so snagged on the bottom because I'm not being pulled in. So what we'll then use is one of these. So this is a um, line puller, call them a variety of things. So what I do, I wrap the line round it, I can then pull, and there we go, we've got that out. Make sure you don't over wrap your braid, because otherwise if you do, you can end up snapping the braid. Oh, I've lost everything. Oh, well. 